الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا سی ریفریشر ویڈیو لیکچر سیریز ان ٹو ڈیز سیشن ویل ٹاک اباؤٹ ڈسک اور فائل آئی او وچ از اے کنٹینیویشن ٹو ون آف آر پریویس سیشنز ان وچ وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دا ٹرمینل آئی او We all know that when a program begins execution, there are three streams that are already open for reading and writing, and these are std in, std out, and std error. We have seen how a C program read and write these streams using the standard C library functions, formatted as well as unformatted I/O. Now we move on to the next step, and that is. writing a c program that accesses a file that resides on a hard disk for this we need to create a new stream between our program and the file residing on the disk let me move on to the board and first of all let's talk about opening of a disk file opening or maybe closing our disk file uh, by this file i mean the disk file must not confuse it with the concept that everything is a file well students unlike the three standard streams std in std out and std error you need to open a new stream that connects the program with the file on disk using the f open library call you must view the main page of that but over here let me write a simple usage of it f open it is passed two arguments both are string arguments and it returns a pointer of type file let me name it fp and in case of error it returns null all right the first argument that is the first string this is the relative or absolute path of the file that you need to open and this second argument which is also a string this can be r as over here this open the text file for reading with the current file offset at the beginning the call fails if the file do not exist so this r is for reading and the current file offset points at the beginning of the file if i use r plus this is same as r but allows writing as well we can have w over here by w i mean open a text file for writing with current file offset at the beginning but in this case a new file is created if a file with that name do not exist you can always use w plus which is same as w but loss reading as well uh, right remember students the difference between r plus and w plus the both loss reading as well as writing however r plus fails if the file do not exist while in case of w plus the file is created similarly we have a as well append if you want to open a text file for writing or appending with the current file offset at the end of the file you use a in this case as well a new file is created if a file with that name do not exist you can always use a plus which is same as a but loss the reading as well well uh, students some systems distinguish between the text as well as the binary files 
the modes for binary files can be rb or r plus b wb or w plus b ab or a plus b that is you just need to append a b with the mod string after having seen the two arguments to f open let us talk about the return value which is this fp file type of pointer let me change color let me say on success f open returns a file pointer that is used in all the subsequent calls to read uh, write and finally close the file and this pointer points to a structure of type file and this structure contains information about the file like the location of the buffer from which we are going to read and write characters the current file offset that is the character position in the buffer where next reading or writing will be performed then the opening mode of the file by this i mean uh, whether the file can be read or written or or both maybe and there are some indicators or flags which are also associated with this structure and one of them is the end of file flag and this end of file flag is set in case the end of file in a text file is reached while reading and you you can always check that with 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 a function like f e o f f p on error the f open function returns null okay let me change color or let me change take yellow and show you the close function on the same page f close the f close function is passed uh, the file type of pointer which you have achieved using f open once you are done with reading and writing you need to close this f close call breaks the connection between the file pointer within the program and the file on disk and thus it frees this structure which is associated with each file stream remember f close is called automatically uh, for each open file when a program terminates normally however it is a good programming practice to close all the files that you have opened before returning from the main function or uh, calling the exit call right students once you have uh, opened a file and you have uh, this file type of pointer you can perform a lot of functions using this file pointer let me move on to the next board take the white color again let me say reading let us perform reading from an open file before start playing on the terminal let us discuss some library calls that we can use to read the contents of a text file like we have seen while discussing the terminal io that we have two categories of functions that is the unformatted and the formatted one the same applies here as well let's first talk about the unformatted functions unformatted functions for reading writing text files well you can use f get c and f put c for reading and writing character by character 
f get c and f put c. Uh, please go through the main page of these two. Uh, let me show you a, a code snippet that reads the file character by character and displays those characters on std out. Let me change color. Let me say reading character by character, reading a file character by character and displaying on std out till the end of the file. Remember uh, there is an end of file character residing on every text file. Let me use uh, the fgetc and fputc functions. Uh, a, a simple code snippet is let me let me say that I want to uh, read this in FP. Remember this FP is the same FP which we have achieved using the fopen call. And I want to read these uh, the, the characters one after another until until I, I, I achieve an end of file. Let me put a bracket over here as well. And I read each character, I compare it. If this is not an end of file, I write it on the screen using F put C. And I want to write on std out, okay. So I write std out over here. Uh, so the fgetc function is passed uh, the file pointer. This file pointer is passed to fgetc, the only parameter to fgetc. fgetc reads the next character from the stream and return it as an unsigned character cast to an int. Or maybe an end of file character in case of an error or an end of file character is encountered in the file. You can use a put C over here instead of F put C because we are going to write on std out. But over here I am using F put C which writes this character on this stream std out. Let me move on to, to the terminal to show you this. <coughs> Let's see. Let me cat a program f1r.c. I have uh, written these programs uh, to save time. So this program is prompting for for a command line argument that has to be a file name. That file name is received in arg v sub one. I call f open with that file name in read mode. And in case of error, I, I, I print the error message and, and exit. And this is the actual lines of code which are reading from, from this file pointer, character by character, and printing them on screen, character by character. Let me compile this f1r.c. Dot for slash a dot out. Let me write the same program f1r.c. So you see, it's very simple. So after having uh, seen the reading of file character by character, let me move ahead and see how we can read a file line by line. So let me see now reading a file line by line and of course displaying the contents on std out and repeating till the end of file character is achieved so let me write the code snippet for that uh, let's suppose that we have a character buff. We create an array of, let's suppose, 
y12 characters. I, 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 I use fgets now. Please do go through the main page of fgets, which is passed three arguments. The first is the buff, then is the number of arguments, uh, the number of characters you want to read, and the stream pointer from which you want to read. And I want to repeat this till till this is not equal to null. And finally, I'm going to print it on screen using f put s the contents of buffer on std out. Oh well this f get as function has three arguments this call reads at most one less than this number of characters it will read five one one characters from the stream pointed to by this fp it can be std in and it will paste them in the buffer pointed to by this buff it stops reading if a new line character is encountered. Whenever a new line character that is backslash n is encountered in the file, f get s will stop reading. It will place this new line character in the buffer, and then after this, it will place a null character over there at the end. And in case an error occurs or and the end of file is achieved, it returns null. So this while loop will continue reading line by line and this f put s function will continue printing line by line. You could have used put s but here I have used f put s which is receiving the second argument that is the stream on which you want to write and over here it is std out. So let's move on to the terminal and see a very simple code snippet that that do this f2r.c over here as well we are receiving the file name and the command in argument we are opening the file in read mode and these are the actual three lines which are reading line by line and printing line by line on the screen let me compile this program f2r.c and let me execute it on f2r dot c as command in argument so you see if you run it on bigger files you will feel that reading and writing character by character is far slower than reading and writing line by line now dear students uh, that we have seen how to read a text file and display it on std out using the unformatted functions let us see how we can uh, write files using unformatted functions. Let me clear screen. Let me show you a program f1w.c. Oops. Let me let me less it f1w.c. Over here as well, I am receiving uh, the file name as command in argument which I want to uh, create or uh, I want to append. This is the uh, the file f open call which is going to open this file in append mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prompt the user to enter a name. I will input the name using the f get as function so that I can I can accept spaces as well. What I need to do is to make this name a proper string i need to remove the new line character and replace it with a null character as we have seen in the terminal io as well so this piece of code is just reading a name with spaces from the user and finally this line is replacing the new line character with the null and the rest of the part is done over here this is 
actually is writing this name in the file character by character this while loop will execute till the time the null character in this name string occurs and for each character over here it is writing that character using f put c to the file pointed to by fp and this is the actual character which is to be written for every iteration of this loop this subscript of the array name is incremented from 0 onward so what this loop is doing it is just writing this name which we have achieved received from the user to the file pointed to by fp and finally i'm uh, just writing a new line after after that name in the file and then i'm closing and saying bye bye so this is a simple piece of code again let me compile this and let me show you a file friends.txt which is having one two three four five five names of my friends let me run a dot out on friends.txt so let me enter my own name so this name must have entered in this file so let me cat friends.txt you can see rf but is there in this file so what i have done is i have written character by character in a file friends.txt the point to keep in mind is that i have used fcats to receive a name from the user via keyboard an important point is that I need to replace the new line character with the null character before writing it in the file. Okay, so if I can write character by character, I can write line by line as well. Let me show you another program. So same file name via command line argument opening the file using f open in append mode and over here you you, you can see i have not used fkts but this time i have used scanf and the good thing in scanf is that it do not put the new line character in the name so that's why i have not replaced the new line character with the null in this case after receiving the name from the user via keyboard this f put s function is writing this complete name this complete line to the file pointed to by fp and finally i'm just placing a new line after that and then i'm closing it okay let me compile this program and let me do forward slash friends and the new name is Mansusawa. So let me cat friends.txt so you can see the name Mansur server has been added in the files friends.txt but this time it has not been written character by character rather this time it is written line by line Dear students, up till now we have seen how to use unformatted, unformatted file I.O. Let me move on to the board. Remember the files may contain integers or floating point values as well. But we have just read those numbers and floating point values, if any, in the file as strings. So, uh, in case if we want to use unformatted file I/O functions, we may have to convert the integers or floating point values that are there in the files manually to appropriate data types, as we have done in case of unformatted uh, terminal I/O functions. 
in some previous session. But the easier way is to use formatted terminal I/O functions like 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 scanf. So let me move on to a new board. We are still reading from an open file, and this time we are using unformatted instead of unformatted. We are using formatted functions. Okay. Let me give the same heading. Reading from open file. But this time I'm going to use formatted functions. Okay. So as far as the formatted functions are concerned, we can use f scanf and f printf functions. The f scanf is similar to scanf, other than that it has uh, an initial argument that is the file pointer from which you want to read. fprintf is similar to printf but it also has three arguments and the first argument is the file pointer from which you want on which you want to write. Let me move on to the terminal straight away show you the scanf family of function this f scanf this has an additional argument over here similarly f printf this has an additional argument in the beginning that is a stream then we have the former string then we have the arguments and And let me show you the code of, of, of the file. Let me let me show you the code. Uh, read uh, numbers.c. This is a longer file. Let me less it. Read numbers.c. This file also receives the file name via command line argument. It opens the file in read mode. And this is where the actual thing is happening. We are using fscanf. The first argument to fscanf is the file pointer from which we want to read that we have received from this fopen. Then we have the format specifier since we want to read integers. So we have a d over here. And then is the variable in which we want to read. And we want to repeat it till uh, and the end of file of this file stream has achieved and we are keep writing this integer that we have read on 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 screen the point to note over here is that i have used an f scanf before this while loop this is because that i want to check this after the first read and after the first read, then I will enter in this portion and this portion will continue until the end of file of, of this file is achieved. The other point to note that is this comma over here. I'm assuming that the file which we are going to read containing numbers, the numbers can be space separated, tab separated new line separated maybe comma separated so if you want that all these separators should be adjusted with f scanf you need to put a comma over here if you do not put a comma over here the new line space and tab separation will work but the comma will not work so what this code is doing overall it is opening a file containing numbers which are space, comma, tab, or new line separated. And it is reading them one by one into this variable i and printing them on screen. Let me compile this file, clear it, and let me show you a, a file that contains numbers which are new line separated. 
let me run this program on this file and you see it has read all these numbers I have another file in which the numbers are comma separated let me run my program to read it let me show you another file which has numbers which are I suppose tab separated let me run my program to read that file so gentlemen let me show you the contents of the code again F scan F three arguments first is the file pointer second is the format specifier with a comma over here and then is the pointer to the variable in which you want to read if you want to read a floating point number you have to have a floating point variable over here and an F or an LF over here and we're going to read the file until we achieve an end of file so gentlemen uh, once you are done with the formatted and the unformatted IO you know how to read files uh, but one important thing that you might have observed is that up till now whenever we perform a read or write operation on a file the reading or writing is done on the on the on the location where the current file offset is looking and of course after a successful read and write operation the current file offset move ahead appropriately and, 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 and until it reaches the end of the file so if you are accessing the file like this this is known as the sequential access so we have been doing sequential access up till now let's talk about a bit about random access as well let me move on to another board I want to talk about the random access <coughs> sorry uh, the first basic function uh, that you, you you may use is ftel ftel is a function to which you will pass the the file pointer and it will it will return the value of the current file offset associated with with the stream pointed to by fp so if you want to uh, see at which location right now the current file offset is looking you can use ftel similarly there is another very basic function that is rewind this is used to move the current file offset to to the beginning of the file whenever you want to do that you can do that most important function most commonly used for repositioning of the current file offset is fseek let me write the signature of fseek file asterisk fp the second argument is of type long offset and the third argument is of integer type whens you can see the man page of this as well the fseek function basically moves the current file offset of the file pointed to by by this fp to a location that is this offset plus whens the value of whens can be seek set this is a constant that means from the beginning of the file you add this much number of bytes and move there it can be seek cur means move this much number of bytes offset number of bytes from from the current position where the current file offset is looking you can have seek end over here in the whence part which means move this much number of bytes offset number of bytes from the end of the file ahead let me show you some examples for example f seek fp comma zero comma 
seek underscore set. This call is equivalent to the rewind call. This call is similar to this rewind call because this is going to move uh, the current file offset to the beginning. Zero plus seek set means beginning, that means zero. So it will rewind the current file offset to the beginning of the file. Similarly, we can have This means move the current file offset to 50 positions or 50 bytes ahead from the beginning. This means beginning of the file. Similarly, I can I can call this something like this seek cur. This means move the current file offset uh, 50 positions or 50 bytes ahead from from where the current file offset is looking. You may do something like this fp50 seek underscore end. So this says move the current file offset 50 positions ahead of the end of the file. Remember, students, it is okay to seek past the end of file. If we try to read from there, we, we, we get an error. But if we try to write there, it's okay. So there is a file and the end of file is over here. What we can do is we can move ahead any number of bytes and start writing from here. This is known as a hole within the file. All the 50 bytes between the previous end of file over here and the newly written data over here they will contain null characters when read. If you check the size of the file, it will not show the, the this, this, this 50 bytes over here. However, if you copy this file, uh, this file with a hole, the new file will not have a hole in it and will, will take much more disk space than the original file, at least 50 bytes more. These functions are quite simple. I'm leaving the practice of doing, doing this random access on you. I expect that you can move your current file offset within the file plus and minus and read and write that file in between as well. So well let, let me move ahead and move to the last related concept that I want to discuss that is the binary files. Let's move on to the new board. Let's talk about the binary files. Dear students, up to now uh, you have worked with the text files. Now let us talk about the binary files. Uh, a binary file contains custom file formats. For example, uh, let me move on to the terminal and, and show you that. If you you have a special type of file that is a dot out. If I use the cat program to read this file a dot out, which is in the present working directory, I, I, I get a lot of garbage. A dot out is one of the example of a binary file which you, you cannot read using the cat program because the cat program is written to read text files only. There are there are programs which you can use to read 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 such files like readlf. So read ELF is a program that is capable of reading the binary files of this format, a dot out, ELF format. So this is showing you all the headers of this. We, we have seen read ELF file in some previous operating system lecture session. Other examples of binary files can be audio, image and video files. Now uh, let us discuss a scenario. Let us discuss a scenario where we might like to create binary files instead of text files. Let's suppose that I have I have a text file and the text file I have written something like <clears throat> I've written 
let's go a uh, roll number or a uh, uh, an id and then the name of a friend and then the city in which he resides and then some other friends and and there is a record 50 and on that i have a friend jameel who lives in lahore and i have written l-a-h-o-r-e and after that i have 51 rauf and so on so let's suppose that there is a text file that contains a list of friends in such a way and jameel has moved from lahore to rawalpindi Now Lahore has six characters while Rawalpindi has ten characters. I just want to update the file. One of the solution is uh, I simply replace these six characters with these ten characters but it will overwrite and corrupt the next information of, of Rauf. So one solution is that what I do is I open this file in read mode and I open another file in write mode I read this file up till this Lahore and write these characters in the new file as such So I have opened the first file and read it till Lahore and I have created a new file and read out, written all those characters in, in the new file. Now I have, I have, I have written Rawalpindi over here. Now I have moved the current file offset of the first file to, to this place. And now I have copied the rest of the original file in the new file. 51, Rauf and so on. And finally I have deleted this file using the remove call. And I have renamed this file to original file. So this is one solution but this is a very, very costly solution. Particularly if these changes occur frequently. So a good solution is use the concept of fixed size records. Let's suppose that I have a record which says the roll number, let's suppose 45, the name let's suppose Jamil and the city. And I assume that the roll number is of type int which take 4 bytes. And let's suppose I keep 20 characters for the name and I keep 30 characters for the city. So this structure comes out to be of about 54 bytes. So I use a uh, random access. That is if I want to access the 11th record, let's suppose I want to access the 11th record. What I can do is I know each record takes 54 bytes so I just multiply 10 with 54 I get 540 then I use fseek fp540 seek set so this will move the current file offset to to the beginning of the 11th record and I can do a lot of reading and writing over there I can change the name of Jamil up till and unless the name doesn't exceed these 20 characters. Similarly, I can change the city until the character count remains within 30. And I can of course change this integer value as well. So uh, now if there is a binary file, we 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 need to use calls like fread 
and have fright. So whenever you you create or you open an, a binary file, the calls that can be used to read and write them are f read and f write. Let me move on to the terminal. Let me see if I have. Uh, yes, I have a binary file, uh, a program that reads the binary file. Oops. Okay. So it's simple. Just try to understand. I have created a structure of type student containing three members, the ID of the student, name and address, each of 20 characters, 20 bytes. I receive the name of the file via command line argument, which I want to read. Then I open the file and note the mode of the file, that is RB this time. It is a binary a mode. We are opening the file in binary mode for reading purpose only. And rest of the part is same. We are using F read and we are entering in a while loop and we are displaying the members of the structures and then we are doing F read again. Let me show you the man page of F read. It is passed four values. The first value is a pointer to the structure which you want to write, like the buffer which contains, which contains data. To be populated. The second is the size, the size of that structure, size of S1. The third one is the number of records you want to read. Let's suppose I just want to read one record at a time. And the final argument is the stream from which I want to read. So F read is going to read one structure at a time from a file that is pointed to by FP. And once I have successfully read the structure in S1, I can display them using these three printf statements. And then I'm going to read again. And I'm going to repeat this till the end of file is not achieved. Finally, I'm going to do F close and then done goodbye. So let me, let me see if I have a file. I have a file students.dat which is a binary file and you can see uh, there are some records but the cat program is not displaying the values properly. Let me gcc read binary.c and let me pass this program students.dat and you see this file has three records right now rfput and hadithput. And this by by is of course uh, the printf statement which is there in the read binary file. Let's see the code again. There is a structure which is over here. Then we are going to open the file in binary mode. We are going to use f read call and we are going to repeat till the end of file and after each F read we are going to display the member of this structure on the screen. Let me show you a file, a program that can be used to write structure within, in, inside a file. This is also the same piece of code, the same structure, student structure. Over here, the point to be noted that we are opening the file in binary mode, but in append mode as well, so that we, we can append data. This f open will return file pointer, which will point to, to this file. Let's post students.dat. And the current file offset will be at the end of the file because we are in append mode. Now we are going to get three inputs from the user, the roll number, name, and the address. And this is how I'm getting the roll number. Remember, this getchar function is used to eat the new line character that is still there in the input queue. We have seen this thing in the terminal IO part. This is important. 
if you haven't understood this please go through that lecture again over here i have read the name with spaces using scanf and over here as well i have used get char to eat the new line character which is still there in 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 the input queue finally over here i have read the address i can read the address using the same same logic as as in case of name but over here i have used fget s and remember in case of fget s we have a new line character which we need to replace with the null character so these two lines actually do that task for me finally once we have these three values read from the keyboard from the user the simple task is that we use f write call the f write call is very similar to f read which writes the structure s1 of size this much only one object to the file pointed to by fp then we close let me compile this std s dot that let me enter a number let's suppose uh, three the name is Mansur server and the address is bcit let me gcc let me cat students are that which of course we cannot read but you can see the additional value over here let me gcc read binary and now let me read this students dot that you can see the third record has been added in the file okay students uh, let me let me let me sum up we have learned how to open and close a file stream we have learned how to read and write text files using the unformatted file io functions like fget c and fput c if you want to read and write character by character or fget s and fput s if you want to read or write line by line to a text file we have also learned how to read and write text files containing integers and floating point values using the formatted io functions like f scanf and f printf i have i have i have tried to tell you about the f seek function that can be used to move the current file offset to uh, the location of your choice wherever you want to perform the read write operation and finally we have seen how to create binary files and how to read and write them using f read and f write calls students hope uh, the session was informative for you all i wish you all the best happy coding and allah hafiz <laughs>